hello and welcome to my channel my name's Ali and in today's video I'm going to be talking about things you need to consider before you start breeding chinchillas now this is part one to hopefully what will be a multi-part series on how to breed chinchillas safely but we'll see how this one goes so the very first thing you need to consider is why why do you want to breed chinchillas if you just want to breed chinchillas to get cute little chinchillas like this one, I would say that's not a particularly good reason to breed chinchillas. If you want to just look at little baby chinchillas and just look online, it's not really a good enough reason to be breeding at chinchillas. Although this one is particularly cute. Okay, so if you want to breed chinchillas to make money and make a profit, I would say okay good luck to you but the chances of you making a profit are minimal unless you have hundreds and hundreds of chinchillas and you're willing to sell them to practically anywhere um, if you're breeding ethically and you have a small amount of chinchillas the chances are is you won't make any profit at all or if you do make profit it'll be very very minimal even with a lot of new breeders today that seem to think they can charge a fortune for chinchillas they still won't make be making a great amount of profit if they're breeding them ethically because of the amount of vet bills and other situations that can arise which can be huge the chances of you making a profit are pretty minimal so if you're breeding ethically and you've got a small amount of chinchillas, the chance size you won't make any money. The only people that really make money out of breeding chinchillas are really, really large ranches that sell their chinchillas to like pet shops and potentially people that own fur farms. Now, fur farms are illegal in the UK, but other places in the world, they're still going because obviously they do make money from them. People still do buy chinchilla fur and it can make them huge amounts of profits which is why they are still in business unfortunately but yeah that's the only real way to make money from chinchillas if you have a lot so i have noticed quite a few new breeders in the uk have started charging absolute fortune for chinchillas but what i'd say is don't get your hopes up and think oh this person's trying to sell their great chinchilla for 300 pounds and this person's trying to sell their angora for a thousand pounds you know that's how much you're going to be getting because chances are people just won't pay it because that price is just ridiculous so yeah i would say don't get fooled by what you see online and think oh how much are chinchillas selling for they're selling for this price because generally they're not these people are just ludicrous but if it's because you have a genuine interest in the species and want to actually improve the quality and health of the chinchilla species in general, then this video might be for you. So you've decided, yes, I want to give breeding a go. The first thing you need to do is do lots and lots of research from multiple sources. So don't just rely on one person's advice and research. Look at multiple sources to gather a rounded picture of how to breed chinchillas. Now, another good thing to do is actually join an organisation. So in the UK, we have something called the National Chinchilla Society, which is basically the people that run the shows in the UK. And I'm sure you have something similar in America. And I know in the rest of Europe, chinchilla shows are actually far bigger than they are in the UK. So there's lots of societies out there that you can join. And then what I would say is attend some shows. Now, this will give you an idea of what qualities show people are looking for when it comes to chinchillas and what makes a quality chinchilla and that way you're able to assess yourself or you can get someone else to assess your animals to see whether they are breeding quality or not because the last thing you want to be doing is breeding animals that are not really breeding quality because that will cause health issues further down the line so it's really really important to attend a couple of shows because at these shows there are people that have been breeding chinchillas for years years and years and years and quite often they want to pass on their knowledge to you because if they're passionate about chinchillas that's what they'll want to do now I am going to be honest with you I personally am not a show type person and I find the whole show thing a little bit weird to be honest with you a little bit weird and it's a between. 
but when I first started out I did actually attend some shows and I did meet lots of other breeders and it did help me immensely at the time and I still am friends and talk to some of those breeders now just get what you can out of those organisations you know because there is a wealth of knowledge there people that have been breeding for years and years and years okay so once you've joined a few organisations you've found hopefully found a mentor someone that can help you gathered loads of information quite often those organisations also have gazettes and newsletters which give you up to date information on chinchillas next thing to do is to understand chinchilla genetics now the easiest way I found this is to actually use a website called Silver Fortune Chillers. Now this is a very very old website. I remember this website back in the day when I first started looking into breeding chinchillas and it was like right when the internet started you had this website. So what it basically is it's a chinchilla genetic calculator. I would say it hasn't really changed in the last 20 years because it still has exactly the same mutations on it as it had back then it hasn't been added to in any way or updated so for the more newer mutations such as black pearl blue diamond royal persian angora lochen they are not on this calculator you have the standard kind of mutations such as standard whites beiges velvets violets and sapphire so the easiest way to get around this issue is just to pretend basically say for example you want to breed royal persian angoras what you do is you pretend that the button for like violet is royal persian angora and see what you would get because royal persian angora and violet are both recessive so they will both bring out the same results but instead of when it says you'll get a violet you'll you change that to you get a royal persian angora that's the easiest way i can think of to actually get around it so even if you're not looking to breed chinchillas this is a really fab website to look at to get an understanding of chinchilla genetics it, it's it's brilliant basically so once you've done all that you've been to a couple of shows you've joined an organization you hopefully have a mentor of some sort and you've done some research into chinchilla genetics the next thing to do would be to work out what you're trying to accomplish so what do you want to breed so with so when you're starting out i would say keep it simple don't go for really new mutations or really um, recessive mutations because they're harder to breed because they're newer there's a lot more work to be done with them so I would start with something like standards uh, or maybe a dominant mutation that's been around for years like beige, white or velvet um, and once you get a bit used to that you could then jump on to violet if you want to but you've got to have a goal in mind what is your goal what is your specific thing that you want to do and your aim of the project is so yeah what do you want to specialize in basically now once you've done all that you need to decide how you're actually going to breed chinchillas because there is multiple ways now i'll go through them one by one now and i'll let you know my opinion on them in the end so okay first way is to poly breed or in america i think it's called bun breeding and this is where you have female chinchillas in separate cages and you have a run in between the cages where the male can have access to all the different females and the females actually wear breeding collars so they can't actually get out of their cages but the male can. I will go into the pros and cons of run breeding in a little while. The next way is colony breeding and this is where you have one male to several females but they're all in the same cage so all the females are in the same cage and the males housed in the same cage as well so it just means that you have multiple females to one male and again there are pros and cons to this which i will go in in a minute and the third way is by pair breeding and this is where you have a pair of male and females just one male one female in one cage Okay, so poly and run breeding. I personally wouldn't recommend this for beginners because it requires a little bit of experience to do it. But there are some benefits and some cons to doing this method. One of the benefits is, is that you need far less males because you have one male for multiple females. 
and also run and poly breeding is generally more productive you will get a lot more kits that way mainly because you can house more females and have less males so you're gonna get more kits overall so this is my opinion on poly and run breeding so this might annoy a fair few breeders but this is just my opinion and view it's not a fact it's just my opinion and that is I would never ever ever do run and poly breeding now the reason being is just because of the cages that are used in most cases i have seen these cages in action in the uk and i know that you can get custom cages that are bigger but my personal opinion is that these types of cages actually make me want to physically vomit <laughs> and that is because the cage sizes for the females are just so so small and the reason why this is is this dates back to fur farming because when you're fur farming are you interested in overall well-being mentally and physically of your chinchillas or are you breeding to make a fur coat and that is why they used to cram all these females into tiny cages and have one male run between them some people will say that is the safest way to breed chinchillas small cages are the best way so whilst I do agree that cages do need to be smaller than pet cages when you're breeding chinchillas to make it safe, I do not agree with the cage sizes that are typically used in these sort of setups. Now as I say, I know you can probably get custom cages for poly cages to make them bigger and make them better for the chinchilla. However, I personally have never seen them all the run cages and poly cages I've seen in the UK make me feel sick to my stomach because they are just so so small so I personally don't go anywhere near poly or run breeding at all but it's down to you whatever you think is best for you but that's my personal opinion the next way is colony breeding now this is similar to poly breeding where you have one male to multiple females the only difference is is rather than having the females in individual little cages you have several females in a larger cage with a male now again there are some benefits to colony breeding one you need far less males so you need far less animals and two your productivity will be higher because you have multiple females to one male there are some downsides one of the downsides is that um, when females go into season sometimes they can get a little bit unpredictable and a bit aggressive so you might have issues with fighting and also when a female gives birth if there's multiple females in the cage of them it can sometimes not always sometimes cause some issues now so I wouldn't recommend that for beginners I do actually prefer this way to poly breeding but it's not something that I would recommend for beginners either um, personally the only real Thing I've dipped my toe in with colony breeding is I used to have a couple of trios so two females to one male and to be honest with you it didn't always work out so now I've gone back to basically pair breeding now the final method is pair breeding now for this one you have a male and a female in a safe breeding cage so breeding cages do have to be smaller than pet cages but not the ridiculous kind of smallness of say poly cages but they do have to still be in smaller cages just to keep them safe and uh, you have one male one female now this is a way that I would recommend for beginners because there is going to be slightly less complications with that in general you'll still probably get fighting every now and again just with pair breeding it does seem to be a bit simpler and so there are some cons to pair breeding and that is the fact that you're going to have less kits because you're going to have one female one male together and that's it and you're going to need to keep as many males as you do females because you need a male for each female so you're going to have more chinchillas some more chinchillas to feed and yeah a lot more work but it is the way that i prefer to do it and that is and and that is how i do do it i pair breed my chinchillas i don't poly breed them and i don't colony breed them it's just pairs for me all the way so okay so if you've listened to all the things that I've talked about and you still want to go ahead and breed then I would say the next thing you need to consider is before you start actually buying and purchasing quality chinchillas is to 
make sure you have your finances in order so you need to have some savings put by for things that could potentially go wrong because things do go wrong when you're breeding chinchillas vet bills are astronomical and you can have issues with mothers having trouble giving birth which could result in c-sections which are hugely costly just having a lot of chinchillas in general just generally makes the vet bills just go through the roof so you really do have to have some savings put by for emergency vet visits and vet visits in general because that is something you really will need to rely on once you first start up chinchillas once you start selling baby chinchillas then you might be able to recoup some of that money and that's why i'm talking about breaking even you might be able to break even and actually um the cost of actually buying the chinchillas and having vet visits and all the potential problems you could have you may be able to outweigh that with the actual price of selling your chinchillas but you know, it is what it is. You need money in the bank before you start. Okay, so once you've decided how you want to breed chinchillas, the next thing to do is to actually find some quality chinchillas. So once you've looked at what you want to specialise in, which mutations you want to work with, etc., then you need to go out and find the best possible quality chinchillas you can and this means going to shows going to show breeders and hopefully they'll be able to guide you on your journey to great breeding pairs what i would strongly recommend you never do is to breed your pets because your pets generally won't have pedigrees and they won't have history to them and the reason why they've often been put on the pet market is because they're not good enough quality to be bred with breeding animals generally get passed around to breeders so breeders to breeders generally swap their kits and swap their adult chinchillas breeding quality chinchillas are quite hard to come by because breeders generally trade between themselves for breeding quality chinchillas the ones that enter into the pet market are generally not good enough for breeding either they're too small don't have the qualities that are required don't have the fur quality may have hidden health issues that you're not aware of so yes never breed your pets always go to a reputable good quality breeder get a pedigree make sure you're not getting ripped off which is hard because <laughs> some of them rip you off a lot they rip you off a lot and also I recommend not getting kits for breeding purposes because at the age of a kit you are not going to know whether that chinchilla is going to be breeding quality until it grows up a little. So if you're going to be buying a kit from somebody, a breeder, they're not going to be able to guarantee that that chinchilla is actually breeding quality until it grows up. I can say, hey, the mum was a show winner and the dad was a grand show champion. That doesn't mean that their kits are going to be show quality. There's more of a chance they will be good quality, but it's still not guaranteed. So really, you're better off, if you're starting out breeding, you're better off finding adult animals, uh, that you can see and they can tell have the qualities for breeding because if you buy a kit you're just really not going to know until it grows up whether it's going to be good enough for breeding or not so they're the first things to consider before you start breeding so i might do a video next on the next steps which is what to do once you get your quality pedigreed chinchillas and to show you how to pair them up what to look out for when you're breeding them and all the stages after that so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have give it a thumbs up and if you haven't sorry all right see you in the video soon goodbye